In history and legend, the laws which first shaped human beings into societies were held to be divine in origin. To Moses on a mountaintop was given a code of behavior for his and future generations. To Muhammad in the desert, the truth was revealed and recorded for a widening world. And in other lands, other priests and prophets received and disseminated the word. But in time, law and divinity suffered an uneasy separation. The Magna Carta signified that henceforward men would make codes for men to live by. The great letter altered the relationships between governors and governed throughout the Western world unto this day. There have been men whose strength made their codes uniquely imposable on those who were subject to them. And there was a Bill of Rights whose authors were spokesmen for a whole new nation. Curiously, in all this, there was small acknowledgement that half of humankind is, after all, woman. Welcome to this first interhemispheric conference for women lawyers on law, population, and the status of women. We feel it is an interrelated uh, subject, and we hope that at the end of the four days that you're here, that we'll have some positive thoughts to carry back to our individual countries, and perhaps some uh, unified thought to carry to other women lawyers and to other lawyers. We have adopted as the motto of the conference that law is the history of the mixing of codes. We hope that most of the major speakers uh, will note the influence of other codes than the one which uh, is the primary uh, source of their law. Sixty women lawyers and legislators from 38 countries met at Airlie Foundation, a nonprofit educational foundation near Washington, to consider their options. Speakers came from their own distinguished what ranks. I hope will be the dominant Harriet Pilpel of the United the States. Systems ...which all of you represent from different corners of the world. I hope that the dominant mood will be one of daring and courage. I'm not mentioning intelligence because that's self-evident. Daring and courage have not usually been a characteristic of the legal profession which has been dominated by men. In the United States of America and many other countries, women lawyers, far more than their male counterparts, have played an important part in overcoming legal barriers to freedom of choice as to when and whether to have a child. They propose to examine five legal systems, that of the United States, continental law, commonwealth, Islamic, and Latin American law. Les quatre tables rondes qui vont se dérouler cet après-midi seront particulièrement importantes car ce que nous voulons faire ici, c'est avant tout avoir un dialogue. Que As co-chairperson of the conference, Anne Dorlon Rollier of France outlined the responsibilities of the various panels and herself spoke for continental law and the vast changes it has seen in the past decade. Until recently, France was the least amiable of legal climates for a woman. But within the last few years, the French woman has acquired strong legal status and protection from discrimination, and above all, the freedom of choice about when and whether to have a child. Across the Mediterranean, where France built miniatures of herself along the Fertile Crescent, as in Tunisia and Lebanon, and bequeathed a formal legal system, reforms would be slower. For here, other codes prevail. This is the domain of Islamic law. Le droit musulman est une œuvre législative fondée sur la vérité révélée. But as Laura Mogazel of Lebanon told her audience, Islamic law, once thought to be immutable, is changing to conform not only to revealed truth, but to discovered reality. Stephanie Ansa of Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, Commonwealth law 
is a rather ambiguous term, but in the context of the theme for this conference, I wish to restrict its meaning to that system of law generally applicable to Britain and its present or former dependencies. Each Commonwealth nation has either a constitution or, as in the case of Britain, certain laws which constitute its fundamental law upon which all other laws are based. These fundamental laws guarantee the liberty of the individual, but also recognize the family as the basic unit of society. Two themes recurred again and again, the family as the central consideration and change in the status of women as at least possible. One who has made that change dramatic is Mehrangiz Manucherian, who left a brilliant career in the Iranian government to work for her countrywomen and all women. She spoke on human rights in Iran with the daring and courage which the speakers had been asked to demonstrate. Iran is a burgeoning nation whose every material goal seems possible of attainment. It enjoys a leadership publicly dedicated to universal prosperity, strength, health, literacy. Moreover, it traces its history back proudly through 6,000 years. And yet, as Madame Manu Cherian pointed out, present civil law says that a husband has the right to slay an adulterous wife and her lover. Clearly, there is room for change, and change has been promised. It is by reason of the working panel sessions examined in depth laws pertaining to the status of women. That there have been many laws. Nani Sawondo of Indonesia led the panel on legal barriers to freedom of choice. Others studied legal problems involved with delivery of family planning services and the role of women lawyers as agents of change. Discussion was free and frank, for these panels were shaping what would be the final recommendations of the conference for action by their colleagues worldwide. Occasionally, even the men were heard from, as this observer from Iran. Uh, it is open to male and female. Uh, the only thing, I think, for the, in the practice is that for the sterilization of women, the consent of the husband is required. For male sterilization, however, uh, the problem is different, and not many of our country men, male, will consent to sterilization very easily. However, it's picking up also, it's starting. It is one thing to read in the morning paper that the status of women in a particular country is nearer the 12th century than the 20th. It is something else to hear a woman of that country on the way to breakfast on a Virginia morning tell you what she plans to do about that status when she returns home. By the second day, they were more or less adjusted to the tasks and to each other. Um, the Swedish government... Birgitta Linner spoke for Sweden. And ...promote new attitudes arising out of a public uh, debate and public opinion and e economic, social and medical research and uh, to implement the new ideas as examples. Now we have parental um, leave, not only maternal, maternity leave, but parental leave since 1974. You could call it baby leave for both fathers and mothers. They can decide themselves who one who wants to stay home. Yeah, <laughs> because that's, why shouldn't they have a chance to decide that themselves? It's for seven months after birth, uh, together with a child birth. J'ai préféré de façon assez succincte et malheureusement superficielle, vous présentez... From Tunisia, Sukina Bourawi came another aspect of the Middle Eastern woman's story based on the situation which exists when a nation's president has himself given a mandate for change. The Greeks asked Solon the wise, what is the best constitution? He replied, first tell me for what people and in what period of history. 
qu'il faut toujours remettre les choses dans leur contexte humain. In other words, in this struggle there are no absolutes, save the conviction that laws must change as times change. An examination of other laws, such as those on marriage, family relations, Irene Cortez of the Philippines. The need for change if these laws were to be consistent with a policy to contain a runaway population growth. Thus, the civil code provisions fixing the minimum age of marriage at 16 for the male and 14 for the female, together with the obligation for mutual support among relatives, account for early marriages between parties still unable to support themselves, much less a family. Some measures were found to be untimely. Her nation has a somewhat anomalous legal history, rooted in ancient Oceanic traditions, then under strongly Roman Catholic Spanish control for more than three centuries, then half a century of United States influence. Finally, a return to its own multifaceted patterns, an interesting problem in law, population, and the status of women. Among the most valuable contributions were those from the legal and legislative luminaries of Latin America. The women of that continent have compressed ages of progress into two decades. Maria Maldonada Castro of Venezuela spoke of an element too often neglected, the financial aspects of change and population programs, budgeting for achieving social ends. Venezuela is one of the more developed of the developing countries with a healthy respect for industrial progress and a willingness to support programs to keep that progress from exacting too high a price. Arriving at this place and time against almost insuperable odds was a lovely ancient lady who had been a family planning advocate and a disciple of Margaret Sanger more than 50 years ago. Shizue Kato of Japan. Distinguished chair ladies and friends, uh, I was introduced as a lawyer, and, but in fact I am not a lawyer, but a lawmaker. <laughs> the, the, reason, uh, the reason I wasn't uh, become a lawyer because when I was uh, young, in my girlhood days, my government didn't allow any girl to enter to university, so that's why I didn't have a chance to study in the university. Now, <coughs> this is my great pleasure and honor to be given an opportunity to express my views on this subject. In Japan, women have won total status as human beings, only recently. A difference of condition marked by more than distance in miles was reported by Mira Alinchic of Yugoslavia. Of particular importance for the Yugoslav woman is the newly created legislation on family planning or birth control in our 1974 constitution. We believe that family planning is an individual right and not only the given right of parents. The norm's intention is to protect the woman from eventual dependence upon the decision and attitude of her spouse. Earlier, questions of abortion and contraception only involved the woman and her emancipated attitude and the gynecologist. Gradually, the idea of the importance of family planning spread with respect to the interest of the child and society. Today, family planning is not understood as a position determining the number of children, but rather as a need for humanizing person-to-person -person relations. We think parents should be aware of the laws of biological reproduction in order to give a wanted child the richest emotional life possible. Dialogues continued informally between the sessions. Como brasileira, eu acho que a presença nesta conferência vai me dar muito Romy Madeiros de Fonseca of Brazil said, 
As a Brazilian, I think this conference will impel me to work harder for the condition of my countrywomen. We will all return home convinced there is only one road for women if they want true emancipation, and that is through family planning. The women that we hear at the moment are the articulate women, the women who've been educated. Stephanie Daly of Trinidad. They tend to preserve the status that they have achieved. They, they talk about the other women who work at these sort of subsistence levels, but they don't strive to attain as much for them as they do for themselves. And I think that that's still a very, very big problem. It, it's no use to a woman with no money and no opportunity to get money and a shortage of food to be told that she has the right to vote if she... Simply, she's not concerned with that. She, she isn't in a position to be concerned. In a very real sense, you have to make progress through people, through particular persons. And this kind of Congress makes it possible for women from one country to get to know women from a great many other countries. For example, France is very far ahead in the field of the status of women's rights. And we heard a great deal about that today, <coughs> with the result that I think all the other delegates, Western European, Asian, African, Latin American, have got some ideas which eventually will take root in their own country. Of course, it's very difficult because the problems are extremely specific in each country. And what is true for France, for instance, is absolutely wrong for Africa or Asia. But another positive point of this conference is we are working between lawyers and belonging to the same profession. We understand each other much better, you see. We are talking about different systems of law and how the women in all these countries which are participating uh, solve the problem of uh, improving the status of women. Women all over the world have great responsibilities, both inside and outside the home. Um, Dr. Agri, a famous Ghanaian educationist, said that when you educate a man, you educate an individual. If you educate a woman, you educate a whole nation. Educate women of all the world, uh, because through education, you can go to any part of the world. You can teach the woman how to help the family, how to know their rights, how to do everything in the future. So I think the most important thing is to educate women first. And uh, when they are able to understand a certain number of notions, well, of course, they will come to family planning because they will understand that it's the interest of the whole family and of the children of spacing the birth and not having so many children and so on. Yes, I can add perhaps also that if she can plan her family, she can also better plan her work, her career. It's easier yes. when she has a burden of children she doesn't expect. It's more difficult and also for the employer, uh, he can always think that a woman will become uh, pregnant, pregnant every yes. year and at every time. So it's important even for right for equal work and uh, That's why it's civil rights. Mm. That's why it's the first right and ev all the rights are uh, founded on that one. Population problems are related with the rights of women because women are the um, originators of family. And um, you, you cannot leave us out whatever you do. The lawyer as catalyst was the subject of the last speaker, Raquel Moc de Martinez of Mexico. Antes de empezar mi exposición, quiero ser el vocero del Grupo Latinoamericano para dar a ustedes las gracias por la hospitalidad que nos han brindado y sobre todo la oportunidad de conocer a personas de tan alta categoría. On the first day of International Women's Year, a new article in Mexico's constitution went into effect 
saying not only that men and women are equal before the law, but defining its position on population in these unmistakable terms. All persons have the right to decide in a free, responsible, and informed manner on the number of children they will have and the intervals between them. So the hard task of reaching agreement on the recommendations began. In order that a woman be a person able to contribute to and to benefit from social progress and development, she must enjoy equality with men in law and in fact in all fields. Azisa Hussein of Egypt spoke the key words of the introduction. If this body were to present a united front to the world, valiant decisions would have to be made. Therefore, needs to be carefully studied in every country so that gaps in national legislation may be identified where legal reforms may be urgently needed. Quisiera proponer que se pusiera, varones y mujeres deben tener derecho igual a trabajo igual. In the end, agreement was close to unanimous on a series of recommendations for the legal routes toward improvement of the status of women, for giving to them, as their due, rights which men of all nations take for granted. They formed and stated many vital points that grounds for divorce shall be the same for men and for women, that parental obligations and rights shall be shared equally between father and mother, that women shall have the same inheritance rights as men, that each person shall have equal opportunity of remunerative work and equal rights as to salary, fringe benefits, and working conditions for equal work that steps shall be taken to eliminate polygamy where it still exists legally, that there shall be no legal barriers to the distribution of information, education, and services in connection with safe and acceptable methods of contraception, that all persons shall have the right to freely choose the number and spacing of their children. In sum, they were simple guidelines to goals which were all, with effort and sincerity and compassion, attainable. On the closing night, they laid aside their conflicts and their working clothes for a reception at the home of Dr. Murdoch Head, director of Airlie Foundation, himself a lawyer. Few of these women, perhaps none of them, has surrendered either femininity or ties to home and family. They are visible reassurance to the men who still fear the possible consequences of giving them an equal role in life. As a lawyer, I think it is most significant that we not only have lawyers who are interested in the study and motivation of, of population interest. No solamente tener abogados y abogadas que estén interesados en el problema de población y tengan interés en el problema de población. But particularly lawyers who are also women. No especialmente que haya mujeres, abogadas, que estén interesadas en esto. And I feel, I feel that it is important for those of you who are active in your, in your communities and in your countries and particularly those of you who are professionals to enter into this, the most important problem of our time. Not part of the problem, but possibly part of the solution. They had some vivid memories to take home from this conference. There had been a crowded day in Washington, exhilarating even for those who regard some other capital as center of the world. They encountered such veteran senators as Humphrey and Javits, and perhaps best of all, their young host, Senator Kennedy, was responsible for entering their recommendations in the congressional record, giving historic substance to their collective ideals. 
In order that a woman be a person able to contribute to and to benefit from social progress and development, she must enjoy equality with men in law and in fact in all fields. Sigmund Freud once asked a desperate question, perhaps for all men. What do women want? In heaven's name, what do they want? Justice, Dr. Freud. Justice.